KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Tokyo 21, presented locally by IT&E. Hafadei Guam and welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Jason Salas and these are tonight's top stories. Sabrina Salas Matinani reporting. Guam has suffered another COVID-19 related death, this being the youngest person to die to date from coronavirus. The Joint Information Center reporting that a 10-year-old boy with underlying health conditions passed away at 10 p.m. Saturday at U.S. Naval Hospital in Agania Heights. The boy had tested positive on September 3rd. Governor Lulian Gross saying, I have made difficult announcements with each life we lose to COVID-19. With the passing of this 10-year-old boy, this is the hardest one I have had to make. This is news no parent ever wants to receive. He was just a child with a full life ahead of him. There is no pain deeper than losing a child. This marks Guam's 26th COVID-related fatality. Well, September is Recovery Month, and the lieutenant governor of our island shares some of the efforts being done to provide more critical services to those who need help. Here's more. Prior to becoming lieutenant governor of Guam, Joshua Tenorio was the administrator of the courts for the judiciary of Guam and made efforts on getting clients into treatment programs. After seeing a rise in drug crimes and defendants coming through the courts, he knew something had to be done. When speaking on the link, Tenorio says that on Wednesdays, he meets with representatives from the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness and the Department of Youth Affairs. The topic? The need to expand substance abuse programs and identify a facility for recovery. There's some uh, additional work that we're doing, a um, couple fronts. Um, we just identified some CIP money for behavioral health to uh, do a permanent uh, structure for their, for uh, to add on for their substance abuse um, uh, treatment and counseling. And then we also have plans to um, expand the number of beds. He adds that Gura has already provided funding for additional beds for Salvation Army's Women in Recovery with Families, which Chinorio says fills a huge gap. There's so many women that um, are motivated to recover a lead a life of recovery, but reunify with their families and their children. Uh, and there hasn't been a facility that's been able to um, to be there for the women that come out of the programming and then um, work to reintegrate them with the kids. The lieutenant governor says that groundbreaking for the women's facility was supposed to happen before the lockdown, adding that all the contracts are in place. Along with the construction of that facility, there is another thing he's looking forward to. The uh, additional inpatient for men. Um, that uh, we're working on a plan uh, and some funding streams for. With September being Recovery and Suicide Prevention Month, he acknowledges that there may be some who are struggling with dependency, and he offers this advice. Part of it is um, us observing things in our families. When you see people withdrawn, if you start seeing a radical behavior change, and you try and make an effort to reach out to them, sometimes the ones that are addicted are not ready to talk about it. But I just would say, you know, whenever you can, don't give up on people. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharfras. Well, now that ballot placement has been complete, the Guam Election Commission will begin finalizing ballots and begin the printing process. The agency met on Friday to also establish a safety plan for the November 3rd general election. Here's Executive Director Maria Pangolini. Three commissioners are the part of the safety committee. We've met with them, we've met with public health. We're in the process of finalizing um, the safety plan for review. Um, they'll also be looking at um, a couple of correspondences uh, that they, they tabled on Monday. And it's just a community reminder, in-office absentee voting begins on the 19th. If you'd like to make an appointment, you can contact our office at 477-9791. That's 477-9791. And should you not be registered to vote, you can go to the GEC's website. That is gec.guam.gov. In other island news tonight, it is a school unlike any other. And as KUM's Peter Santos reports, he's got Guam's newest charter school in the southern village of Agate. Our status as a trades-focused high school, I think, 
puts us in this really unique position to offer kids um, like an education that's not confined to the four walls of the classroom. As a charter school, we get to play around with um, just the way that we structure our courses. So part of what we're doing at Career Tech is looking at more progressive educational practices. Principal Tamar Sellis is talking about Career Tech High Academy Charter School. The school is currently accepting 9th and 10th grade students for the new school year, which begins on October 5th. One of the things that makes Career Tech unique is their form of grading. Instead of using like, you know, A to F letter grading or 0 to 100 percentage grading, we are uh, giving students feedback uh, based on like course learning objectives. The school's mission is to foster a community-centered, culturally rooted identity, equip the island's next skilled workforce, and build a forum for upcoming leaders of Guam and the region. The ultimate goal is to have students leaving equipped, empowered, and engaged with all that they have learned. Career and Technical Education, CTE for short, our CTE pathway for this first school year is our maritime slash wayfinding program. And what that is, is a marriage of like traditional navigation practices. So our instructor received his um, apprenticeship for carving and traditional navigation from the island of Poloat. Celis says it's the foundation of their curriculum that really sets Career Tech High apart from a traditional school. One of the things that we really want to put at the forefront is building student-teacher relationships, because we think that that's, um, that's the seed that grows into students thriving at anything in the future. Being a trades-focused high school um, really like narrows our focus to the idea of mentorship and apprenticeship, so that, that entails like super close like um, student-teacher relationships. For more information or if you would like to enroll your child in the upcoming school year, visit careertechguam.org. Be sure to follow them on Instagram at ctechguam or Facebook at Career Tech High Academy Charter School. Reporting for KUAM News, I'm Peter Santos. All right, thanks so much, Pete. Great, great job on that story. In other news tonight, the self-described interactive conversation Grief Talk in the midst of a pandemic aims to normalize how we talk and think about grief. Grief recovery specialists Michelle Satamoto and Darlene Garcia shed some light on the realities of grief and the steps that you and I can take to deal with it. And they also add that many are suffering from a sense of loss during the pandemic. Is it never natural to feel so, so fearful, to feel so sad, to feel so confused, to feel so uncertain, um, to feel so ambiguous every single day? Yes, and I think people need to know that. Now, many of us have probably been told to be strong during a family funeral or when a family member or loved one is sick, but Garcia gives a new meaning to this old phrase. Strength, again, is about sharing your emotional truth. And, you know, what we learned um, through our grief recovery programs is that human emotions are meant to be processed. Our bodies are emotional processing plants, but most of us are taught to suppress it, to not feel those bad feelings. The Grief Talk sessions take place every Wednesday in September and are 100% free for the community. And if you'd like more information, you can check out the full interview that we did on the link that's on our YouTube channel right now at KUM News. Well, during this very unprecedented time, Guam Animals in Need, Cyrus Lur says that it's a perfect opportunity to adopt an animal because with the current lockdown, people can find comfort and companionship with a furry family member. You can do it short term or permanently. Lur says they are looking to for, look for foster families to temporarily take in animals and show them some love and affection. So you can contact us on any of the social media channels out there. Just search for Guam Animals in Need, or you can go to guamanimals.org and click on the Foster tab, and uh, our foster coordinator would be in touch with you. If anybody out there knows of people who would like to take in a pet for just a couple of weeks, please get in touch with Guam Animals. Uh, in need, and we can always set you up. Uh, it's it's a largely remote process. We can we can move the animals and fully comply with with BPHSS requirements, mm -hmm. and uh, we're always looking for good homes. Well, again, to see what animals need a not a forever home, but a fur ever home. That's good wordplay. Or if you would like to adopt an animal for your own, head over to GuamAnimals.org.
You can also find Guam Animals in Need on Facebook as well as Instagram. Well, please stay tuned. Coming up, we've got Trend Spotting with Tyler Matanani and Dave Delgado with the Weekend in Island Sports. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the islands. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. It's another tough week thanks to the coronavirus. We're seeing at least a death a day and the hospital situation isn't getting any better. I'm Tyler Matsunani and here's your trend spotting report. It's becoming too common, a tragic everyday occurrence. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero announcing another life lost to COVID-19. This week, we mourned with Asin Maina Mayor Frankie Salas and his family after his youngest daughter was taken by the virus. It was already a shock for many to hear last week that the mayor was stricken with COVID. His daughter, 31-year-old Jasmine Salas, was a young mother with very young children. Jasmine, like her father, was COVID positive. On Friday, she was experiencing shortness of breath and was taken by ambulance to the Guam Memorial Hospital. Despite having pre-existing conditions that made her vulnerable to the virus, she was released that same day. By Monday, Jasmine was found not breathing. She was taken to the Guam Regional Medical City, where she was pronounced dead on arrival. Although not angry with the hospital, the mayor shared his regrets, wishing his daughter was kept at the hospital and not released. The mayor said, I hope this thing is not going to happen again. I'm not pointing fingers whose fault it is, I hope they have some consideration to admit her in the hospital and observe what she has. They took my daughter, checked on her, and sent her back. Mayor Salas shared his heartbreaking story on the link, revealing their family had just been dealing with the passing of his son-in-law. And because he's still in quarantine, he's shared he's numb and in disbelief of his daughter's passing. You reached out and shared some of your feelings over social media. On Instagram, many sending heart and prayer emojis. Carmen Miller 6808 says condolences, Mayor. May she rest in peace. Another Loretta underscore Bloss 77 adds sincere condolences to you and your family. May you all find peace during this difficult time. God bless. In other news, COVID is keeping one of the busiest public health divisions at Public Health even busier. Environmental Health is already a tiny team tasked with visiting hundreds of restaurants and businesses and making sure they're up to code. During the emergency declaration, they're also tasked with making sure those restaurants and businesses are following the law and restrictions. Officer Malou Scroggs tells KUAM that they continue to receive complaints about large social gatherings. Remember, we're supposed to cap it at 10 during PCOR 1 and businesses operating when they shouldn't be. This week, the government launched the Guam COVID Alert app, touting it as a tool to help stop the spread of COVID. The free app works by using Bluetooth to identify whether you've been in contact with someone with the virus. It sends you an alert and gives you steps to take, like self-quarantining yourself, etc., and prevent any more possible transmissions of the virus. 
They say the app is completely anonymous and safe, meaning it cannot identify you, cannot track your location or contacts. The catch is, a whole lot of people need to download the app for it to work. 100 to 200 downloads could potentially save one life. As a tool to reduce the spread, the app could help cut out the need for any more lockdowns and even get our island back open. We asked, are you planning on downloading the Guam COVID Alert app? And here are some of your responses. On Facebook, Dorothy Jesus says, I had a more investment money that's need just for an app. Well, hopefully it works. She also adds, how is this going to help the people of Guam? On Instagram, Obsessed with Miles says, how much did GovGuam pay to have this app written? Another adds, hail to the no. Bad enough big brother out there monitoring already. And we wrap things up with some good news that, well, COVID kind of spoiled. Our MMA greats, Roki Martinez and Frank the Crank Camacho were both slated to fight in the UFC this week. Frank the Crank had been sharing his path to Octagon over social media, showing photos of workouts and prep. And as per protocol, he was required to take a COVID test in Las Vegas days before the match. The result? Positive. He took another test and again, positive. That sidelined the Crank for the moment, but in a few days, he hopes he'll be cleared to fight and reschedule. It's just another fight that, that, that I gotta address and I gotta like like uh, any other fight that I prepare for, I just got to do my best to prepare and and combat it. And the, the best I can do is is try to stay as healthy as possible, get the most amount of rest, hydrate, and take my vitamins. And and most importantly, I think just stay positive and stay strong. Guam, we know what to do. Stay home, keep those masks on, and keep your distance. It's up to us to get those numbers down and get us up and running as soon as possible. Until next time, adjust. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Juan? Dave W. KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching on the show today. Sebi Sisuiko, uh, recently getting the appointment from the GBC Guam Basketball Confederation, being the director for uh, the movement for three on three basketball. First off, uh, how'd you feel when you got the call? And talk about just moving forward now and, and where we're going to go with the sport? Uh, you know, I felt honored that they'd have the confidence in me to, uh, you know, kind of uh, head this three-on-three uh, -three movement that's been happening, you know, not only on Guam, but around the world. Uh, I feel good about it. It's a lot of opportunity for not only the men's program, the women's program, but the youth as well. Yeah, three-on-three -three basketball has definitely been evolving around the nation, and it definitely starts – uh, at the younger age groups. I know you guys are really trying to get it a uh, push started for the middle school uh, level. Uh, yeah, well, not only the middle school level, uh, we're trying to get into interscholastic inter sports. Um, and then I know EJ's where we're having a lot of uh, good movement with the youth as far as the camps that's been going on for, you know, just starting at the little kids to the men's to, to everybody, just trying to get everybody involved. And you've been there, you've represented Guam, Guam winning gold in the three on three. Uh, and Apia and Samoa, three-on-three -three basketball is universal, and it allows our players, you know, we're guard-heavy on Guam, but it's going to give our players a chance to really uh, showcase their talents on, on the basketball court. Uh, yeah, I mean, Guam's always had, you know, speed and heart. That, those are our two big strengths, and, uh, 
you know, those those things are very important in the, the game of three on three. So, you know, we got a lot of good shooters. We got a lot of kids that are willing to work and it's a perfect opportunity for them to compete at the international level, the interscholastic level locally and, you know, everywhere around the world. And for you, jumping right into it, what are some of the things you can probably implement right now? I mean, you know, during the pandemic lockdown, uh, no access to basketball courts, but the kids definitely want to get out there and really start working on their game. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of good programs online. Uh, people are doing at-home workouts. There's tutorials, there's YouTube, you know, they can work out via Zoom if they want to together. Um, as far as individual games, games those can always be worked on and that's where the you know the real work goes in and then it shines on the the basketball court uh but at least three out three is less people so you know <laughs> less contact there's only uh, six people on the court as opposed to 10 people on five on five and the thing about three on three basketball it's the the size and the weight of the ball for those that haven't played the games or been around the the three on three uh sport uh talk about the the ball in general Yeah, so the ball, depending on where the three on three game is going to be played, typically they have it uh, outdoors. They try to do it. So the ball tends to have a little bit more grooves. And they say that that, that is a little bit more control with the wind factor that uh, that plays out there. Um, and then as far as size, it's um, it's women's size, but men's weight. So it feels kind of weird at first, but uh, you think it's easier to uh, to control, but it's just something people aren't used to yet. But uh, through time and you know repetition, people are going to get used to it more and more. And for you representing Guam at the three-on-three -three level and also being a part of the men's national basketball team, um, you're bringing a wealth of experience to the youth. Uh, I'm sure you're really motivated and excited to get out there and work with them. But for you, um, talk about maybe some of the things that you want to get access to, to to help these athletes as far as just understanding the game of three-on-three -three basketball and, and improving their skills. Um, you know, we have a lot of things that we're going to be trying to do. Um, right now, it's kind of tough with the current situation in the whole world. Um, so we're just trying to get, um, when it opens back up, more tournaments. Uh, as far as rules and regulations, we're going to be trying to get some more literature out there so people can be reading and at least they know kind of what's going on. Uh, but the best way to learn really is, you know, just, just to get on the court and just work through your mistakes and then get better. Have you seen firsthand the talent pool of athletes that – Guam has to draw from. Uh, we've been competing at the U15, U17 level for uh, FIBA, but you now as, as a director and as a coach looking forward to working with these kids, how excited are you to see the talent pool that Guam has to offer for three-on-three -three basketball? Uh, it's good. And it's been getting bigger and bigger. And I know uh, the more options that kids have out there, you know, it's better for everybody. Uh, including the parents, you know, just to get them off the streets or just something for them to do. But, uh, as far as opportunities, I know at my age, we didn't really have the U15 and that kind of stuff like that. Is it, if you were good enough, you're playing with the men and that's it. So it's good that kids can have actually have groups of kids that they can work out with that are the same, same age, same uh, talent level. And now there's a lot more options for them. So I'm excited. Yeah, and I think the cool thing about the three on three basketball is uh, players register their teams on the FIBA site and actually get ranked uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's the cool thing about it, is if you have your squad and you want to compete against other guys, uh, you know, on island and eventually off island, uh, you can accumulate points that translate internationally onto the website, like you said, on three on three dot com. And, uh, you know, that's a good way for kids to kind of get that competition going and their rankings. And, you know, they want to see their number advance and they want to get more points. They want to compete more. They want to win more, more games. So that's a good way to motivate kids uh, that way. And you talked about having a, a Zoom meeting with the FIBA uh, people stateside. Uh, what's those talks been like as far as um, getting the appointment from uh, the GBC and, and really getting it out there that you're the guy for Guam uh, on the FIBA level? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we've been involved with FIBA for five on five for, you know, for a long time now. And three on three is kind of a new division that they're kind of working on. So this will be my first, it's like a coaching prepping meeting. So, you know, as uh, being the director, I guess we're going to have to learn how to, I mean, work the, as a coaching standpoint, uh, participation standpoint, the rules and regulations. So it's kind of like we're starting at the, the ground level, but we're kind of halfway of being there. So 
they're just trying to get everybody on the same page and you know just it's really about just getting more opportunities for kids and uh, people on Guam and for parents and kids out there that want to get more information uh, should they just log on to the GBC website should they follow the Instagram uh, where should they get information from yeah, we have, a, we have our Instagram, we have a Facebook page, a lot of our camps and stuff are being announced on there. Um, and then it's always good to just contact either myself or EJ Calvo, the head coach, um, in terms of things that are coming up, things that we'll be doing, um, you know, things change day by day. But as far as three on three, I mean, you can Google three on three, start watching videos and, you know, watch international games. And it's, it's pretty exciting because the, the girls get involved and the girls are actually, you know, they're balling out too. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate the time. Cool. No problem. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Social distancing may be the new norm, but connection will always be our tradition. Through good times and tough times, we remain connected with you. Mass may be the new fashion, but protection will always be our style. You can always count on us to protect the things that matter the most. Sanitizing may be the new routine, but caring will always be our practice. We care about your loved ones and the things you value the most. And as we welcome our new normal, one thing remains certain, we will always be here for you. We're open and ready to serve you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. All right, everybody, our next segment is so cool. I, I got to come like really, really close to tell you. It's Cold Stone Creamery birthday shout outs. When your birthday happens to fall on a weekend, you know what that means, my friends. You get an extra day to pate. But make sure you do so from a socially distant area. Stay safe, stay inside, stay home. We'll have time to party later, but let's all do the right thing. Until then, happy birthday nonetheless on September 12th, a Saturday to Ashton Jace Cruz. Happy birthday number one, Ash. We are truly blessed to have you in our lives. Have a blessed first birthday. Love you, say mom, dad, Avery, Junior, Char, and Kai Kai. Rika LG, happy two years to Rika from her family and friends. Danny Cruz, happiest birthday, Par Dan. Hope you enjoyed your special day. Bula Love from Par Len and Maline and the Tatao Taos. Also, happy birthday to Mateo Zander. Happy birthday to our one and only. We're sorry that we all can't be together to celebrate your day, but always remember that we love you. That's a great message. God bless you always, and with love, say Nana, Tata, Papa, Grandma, Mommy, Daddy, Bianca, and the rest of your family. Great birthday message, guys. On Sunday the 13th, Jalen Cepeda. Happy birthday to you. Love your family, and they say hope you have a special day. And once again, can't say it enough, we love you. And Kinton Bezan. Happy birthday to my boy, coming from your best friend and the rest of your brothers. May your day be filled with all the joy you need. That's a great message. And happy birthday to Mr. Malafunction himself, Chris Barnett, who's probably celebrating right now. Chris, from all of us here at your KUM family, we wish you a safe and happy birthday and everybody whose birthday was this weekend. May you have great health, stay safe, and have a great birthday. Go to KUM.com to register someone you care about for the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. And I'm gonna leave you by asking again and pleading with you everybody, the governor has given us a mission and you know us Guamanians, we finish what we start. So. Make sure, glove up, mask up, social distance. Let's do what we have to do, everybody. Please, stay safe and stay healthy. I'll see you next time.